Do you ever yell at your kids? I do. And it's something that I don't want to do, but it comes out of me. And so I was so thankful when I was reading the introduction to the devout life by St. Francis de Sales, and I came across an entire chapter on meekness. And so in today's video, I wanna take you through that chapter. It's four pages long, it's very short, and I wanna talk about how that looks for us as mothers, because I know that we all want to be gentle, sweet, loving mothers, but it is way harder to act that out than it is to say it and to pray for it. And so if you have been looking for a way to settle yourself down, then I hope that the wisdom of St. Francis de Sales gives you some guidance and gives you some peace. So let's get to it. So as I said in the intro, we are gonna be diving in to the words of St. Francis de Sales. Now, the other day I did a video all about books I think you should read if you're considering Catholicism or you're a new Catholic. I forgot to mention this guy, The Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. This book is a beast of just so much wisdom and it's so practical. If you've ever read St. Francis de Sales, you'll know that he's a very practical writer. He's writing just in a way that every single person can read and gleam wisdom from. The first part says that if you have true meekness, it won't just be external, it'll be inside your heart. So let me read you these words. So if our humility and gentleness are genuine, they will preserve us from the swelling and inflammation which insult is wont to provoke in our hearts. If then, when we are bitten and stung by our enemies and slanders, we become proud, swollen, and indignant, it is a sure sign that our humility and meekness are false and artificial, not hardy and genuine. So I wrote, check this often. How am I handling slander? How am I handling slights? How am I handling other people abasing me? You know, what am I, how is my heart reacting to that? Because it should stay calm and smooth. Even, you know, of our children, I can't imagine, I don't have teenagers yet, but I imagine that teenagers can cause pain in our hearts, you know, and wound us. And so are we staying calm and serene and letting the kind of the storm around us happen with other people's emotions, but that we can kind of stay meek and humble. And that's just such a good self check of where you are. Then he says, this present life is but the road to a blessed life. Let us not be angry on the way with one another. Let us go forward with our brethren and companions gently, peacefully, and lovingly. And this is really important. I exhort you earnestly never to give way to anger. Never. Okay, it's not an option. Later on he talks about righteous anger. And he says, look, we don't have the ability to hold righteous anger. You know, people look at Jesus in the temple and they say, look, Jesus had righteous anger, therefore we should be allowed to have righteous anger. But St. Francis de Sales says, look, because of our concupiscence, we can't hold anger in our hearts. We don't have the capacity to protect ourselves from anger really taking over. He explains on page 146, to exclude wholly even the slightest wrath, albeit just and reasonable. For once having entered the heart, it is hard to dislodge, especially though it enters in but a moat. It speedily waxes great and becomes a very beam. For if it abides with us, and contrary to the apostle's injunction, the sun does go down upon our wrath, it is turned into hatred. We can no longer set ourselves free. For then it will be fed by a thousand false fancies and delusions. Insomuch as no angry man ever thinks his anger unjust. And so then he says on the next line, it is safer than to avoid all anger. So St. Francis de Sales explains how when we use passion and wrath and anger to deliver our message, we're not getting our message heard, as well as when we use reason alone with a soft, kind, gentle delivery. And so as mothers, it can be like, my kids never listen to me unless I yell. Well, perhaps. There's lots of parenting books to help you figure out how to stop that cycle because it's a learned behavior. However, 
Um, I was talking to my children who are 7 and 10. So this, you know, this has to do with reason. And so if you have a little guys, you're parenting probably in a different way than what I'm going to, what I'm going to describe. But for those of us with older children, you know, I was talking to my daughter and I was saying, you know, if I ask you to do something and I ask you to do something with like a passionate voice, you know, like close the door. Oh my gosh, you're letting in all this cold air versus please close the door. You know, the, the, the first part, she's responding to my passion, to my excitement, and she's wanting it to stop, right? Whereas if I say, please close the door, she's using her reason to think through, I wonder why mom's wanting me to close the door. Oh, it must be cold outside, you know, or she can ask clarifying questions, but it's this calm dialogue where she's actually learning something. Whereas in the first example, she just wants me to stop, right? And and we've all experienced this. We've all experienced people who have tried to get their point across in a passionate, possibly angry way. And we just want the yelling to stop. We just want the, the chaos to stop. So we acquiesce to do the thing. But there's no reason involved. There's no actual reaching my heart and my mind. I just want the, the, the chaos to end. And so we don't reach people that way. Um, we don't reach our children truly. We don't teach our children true discipline if we're using these passionate means to do so. So then he goes on to say, well, what do we do? What do we do if we are upset and we don't, you know, we don't want to interact with our children that way? He says, as soon as you feel the slightest resentment, gather together your powers, not hastily or impetuously, but gently and seriously. So he makes a point that even when we react and we realize, oh my gosh, right now I have that surge, right? I'm getting that surge of emotion in my heart and it's trying to come out of my mouth, right? And it's like, we t Jesus says, you know, all sin is through the mouth. I mean, not all sin, because we can hit people, but you know, like most sin is through our mouth and the Bible's full of chastisement against speaking um, sinfully and just to have custody of the tongue. And so when we feel it stirring, the first thing we do is we have to settle ourselves down, but we can't do it. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited. And because we're gonna throw ourselves off balance and then we're gonna lose complete control of our heart. Like it's just, we're gonna lose the battle. So we have to, in that moment, be really calm. And it's so hard, but you know, the more we practice it, I think the better we will get. And then he also says to call upon God to help us. Then he will bid our angry passions to be still and great shall be our peace. So we have to imitate, you know, the, like, think about the apostles in the storm and how they caught their, you know, the boat looked like it was sinking and they called upon God. We have to remember that we always must call upon God or you can go to Mother Mary, right? Who's the mediatrix of all graces and, and say, help me in this moment. Help me to calm down. I'm realizing that I'm struggling. Help me to calm down. Say Ave Maria. Say, Jesus, I trust in you to help settle yourself down. And then he says that as soon as you're conscious that you made a slip, right? That you acted hastily, do not wait to repair the situation through a gentle act. So say I outburst and said, close the door. And then I'm like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. That just got out of me. I got anxious, which is not a you know proper feeling to have. And, you know, I, I let that come out into my words. I'm so sorry, come give me a hug. I didn't mean to. I will try really hard in the future to not let that happen again, right? And just correct it, right? That's, you know, we have to be meek and humble. And humble means you're saying you're sorry. I say I'm sorry all day to my kids and my husband at times, right? Whenever I need to. Um, and there's such grace in that. Don't ever, ever withhold an apology. Um, there's strength in apologizing. There's not weakness. Weakness is not apologizing because you're so prideful that you don't want to admit you're wrong, right? That's a whole other talk. And then he says that when you are at peace, when you're having calm moments, that's when you want to really lay a stock of gentleness and meekness, always speaking and acting both in things great and small as gently as possible. So, and of course, then at the very end, he says, do not resemble those who are angels abroad and devils at home. So, and I think, I mean, we all know that we treat the delivery man at the door better than we treat our kids. And we, you know, I remember when being a, being a young person, I'm like, I'm never doing that. I'm always going to treat my husband and my kids the best. But yet, 
what happens is that it takes a lot of you know training to be kind all the time we let ourselves be a bit more selfish when we're around our family especially if we're not feeling well we have a headache we you know something happened that disgruntled us which we you know is a sign of not being meek and and so it's so important to practice this all day every day with our family in those moments where we feel joyful or calm or peaceful so that when we have moments where we feel that stirring of anger or frustration or irritability we can calm it down much much faster and this is going to be such great modeling for our children because we know we want our children to act meek with each other. Let's pray an Ave Maria for ourselves as mothers, for our children to grow, and our husbands as well, to grow in the virtue of meekness um, so that we can just live in a more peaceful home and more joyful home. But really, it starts with us as mothers. We are the ones who control the dynamics of the home. We have so much power and... Um, we want to use that power for good. So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuc et in ora mortis nostrae, Amen. Mother Mary, we all ask you now in this moment to grant us the grace of meekness to grant us the virtue of meekness, to beg your son for us to send down his powers so that we may be pleasant, joyful mothers, that we may bless our home with warmth and peace and quiet and serenity and just be that mother that all of us want so deeply be inside and that but for concupiscence we would be. In Jesus Christ's name we ask this. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, guys, continue to know God, love God, and do God's will. I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.